Hello, everybody, and welcome to Circuit Lab uh, and Machines for Science Olympiad. This is our third Q&A session of, of the year, and uh, we'll be going over how to use a breadboard and also how to wire a three-way switch. So I would like to start this week by, um, uh, unfortunately, some very bad news. Um, Dr. Uh, Gerard Putz, um, who founded Science Olympiad, along with others, including his wife, Sharon Putz, um, passed away this, um, this past week. Um, he'll be laid to rest uh, tomorrow in Chicago. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it. I'll be traveling for work. But I cannot say enough positive things about this great man and how much he has touched all of our lives by inventing Science Olympiad, but also by his never ending desire to help others, whether it was through teaching, whether it was through his uh, military service, whether it was through uh, just the mentorship he gave so many other educators and the opportunities he gave so many students, so many coaches, so many teams, uh, how he went around the world uh, trying to help uh, children achieve their dreams in STEM and understand what was possible. Uh, he made the world a much better place, and uh, uh, we, we all very much miss him, and we're all heartbroken. Uh, but to that end, um, he would want us to also make sure that we covered the material, and um, and so today we're going to go over first how to use a breadboard. And a breadboard generally looks something like this. Okay, so this is a, uh, it's called a, uh, just a normal breadboard. You can purchase these uh, at any Radio Shack online or any most electronic shops. And what you'll notice here is that I have a series of resistors, which I have put in to the breadboard by poking them into these holes. And what you'll notice is, is that these holes have a conductor that connect the five uh, holes straight up and down in a line together. So that means that these two resistors, what you'll notice here, is that these two resistors are in the same line above and below. So these two resistors are actually in parallel with each other. Whereas this resistor, you'll notice is touching, is into this hole here, right next to where this one is. And these two are not connected at all. By the way, that's a common mistake. And so if I wanted to put these two resistors in series, I would actually have to move one of the resistors. So I'm removing this one. I'm putting it in the hole directly above the other one. Okay. So now right here is where they're attached. So this is the same as me clipping them together or using alligator clips to put them together, but it's much easier. As you can see, I can change this resistor board very easily. Well, now, so this one down here is connected in this, in this uh, row right here, and these two are connected to each other in this row. And then you'll notice that we've got two rows along the top and two rows along the bottom. And there's usually your power and your ground areas. So what now? What's amazing about these is that the is that the conductor on the top and, and the bottom on these four rows, you know, the two rows up here and the two rows down here, they're connected all the way through. So if I put battery in this row right here, let's say I got a nine volt battery and I hook in a nine volt battery and I, and I attach it to a wire in here. Guess what? I've got that all the way through here. So anything I need to attach to my to my um, uh, to my battery, I can just attach anywhere along here. And so it really makes it easy if you want to power a circuit or power multiple circuits at once. And then if I put the ground at the bottom here, 
I've ground all the way through there. So anytime you need to have ground, and let's face it, the two things that when you're designing circuits that you always are, are going to need more times than others is uh, power and ground, okay? You'll also notice that these circuits boards here usually have red, and they can sometimes have two, and a black uh, connector in here, and you'll notice that the holes in these are actually bigger in case you want to use bigger leads. And they actually have special banana clip leads that push right into these. And so a lot of times when you've got a power supply, you'll push into those. And you'll notice on the back here that the black one is actually hooked into the metal. So if I'm if I hook up my ground to the black, everywhere you see metal is ground. And then it's real easy for me to take a wire from here and put it down below here, or maybe use the second row. And sometimes they'll do that. They'll put power on one and, they'll, and the second row will be ground. Again, you just want to make it easier for people to get ground. You say, well, gosh, why do they give two places potentially for you to have the positive leads? And the reason why is that sometimes you have a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Like, let's say I'm going to do a normal VCC circuit. Uh, like if I was going to do uh, an op amp, quite often I'll have, uh, I'll put ground here, plus five volts here, minus five volts here. So the difference between these two is actually 10 volts, but the difference between these two is five volts and between these two is also five volts. Okay. And the reason why you would do that is that like, a lot of your CMOS circuits will want a plus and minus. And it's usually plus or minus five volts. And uh, so like if we're going to do a logic circuit, you'll all, you'll, a lot of the logic chips that you would have, plus or minus five volts. And that's the other thing is that if I had a chip, it turns out that the leads on the chip fit perfectly in these holes. So when you wonder how do they work out the circuit that attaches to a chip, whether it be an op amp chip, a NAND chip, a NOR chip, an AND, an OR, a NOR, et cetera. Uh, if we were doing digital logic is that they actually put the chip right here on the breadboard. Okay. And then I put VCC up here, minus VCC down here. And then probably on the bottom row here, I'll put ground and on the bottom row here, I'll also put ground. And then I can power up that chip because you're usually gonna be powering up the chip with either a VCC and a ground or a VCC and a minus VCC and a ground. So you're either gonna power it with three of those leads. And then the rest of this, I have to look at the diagram and then I know how to hook up my circuit. Now, I also did something sort of sneaky here is that you'll notice that this resistor here, okay, remember we attached it here and I put it into the bottom row here. Well, look, this one also went in the bottom row. So actually these three resistors are now in series. And I just wanted to you to see it that sometimes it's very obvious on a circuit uh, board uh, when things are in parallel or in series, and sometimes it's not very obvious. So you quite often need to draw it out. Um, I would say that there's also a really good PDF on the national website on how the wiring of a circuit board works, but I would have you practice with this because it's, it's a very common hands-on activity. And one of the things they may do is they may actually have you change it and set it up. Another thing that we'll quite often do is we'll have one set up and then you have to interrogate it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, let's say it is an actual circuit. If I hook in Okay. Now, I just put in a, a fourth resistor around here. This one's no longer involved. But if all four of these resistors now form a perfect circuit, okay, one of the problems you're going to run into is if I try to measure 
the resistance between, let's say I wanted to measure the resistance of this resistor here. What ends up happening is, is I'm not only measuring the resistance of this resistor here, but it's in parallel with these three in, in uh, as long as it's still in the circuit. And that's a problem you need to watch out for anytime you're making measurements, when you're making resistance measurements, is have you isolated it? Now, it's real easy to isolate sometimes because sometimes you can just take this one out like so. And now I can easily clip one side and the other and measure the resistance of just this resistor. But remember, if, you're, if your load is still in the circuit, your resistance may be messed up. The other thing that can mess up your, your load in the circuit, let's say you got a lot of voltage there, okay? Um, so again, you want to make sure that when you're measuring resistance, okay, you got power turned off and you've isolated it. If you're measuring voltage, you can measure voltage anytime. Okay, so that's how a circuit board works. Okay, now we talked about a three-way switch. So this is a single pole double throw switch. Okay, and what you'll notice is, is that on here, it, uh, it doesn't say on or off. Okay, then you look at the back here and you'll notice that you have a green node, which is always going to be ground. Okay. You will notice that you also have a black one, okay? And then you also have two, um, two uh, uh, what they'll call uh, on here, they don't call them commons, they call them A and B. And so if I have two of these, okay, the way to think about it is that the connection in here to the black goes here and here, depending on how you switch the circuit. So when I'm switching it here, I'm not turning it on and off. I'm changing it, I'm toggling it from one side to the other, and the same here. And so the way you set up a three-way switch, okay, is that you connect the two common, or the, uh, the two choices, you know, the two branches, if you will, of one, like such. So you'll notice they're both on the on the copper side. So we connect those. And if I've got a, and you'll notice what I did here is I connected them to each other. Okay, such that this wire here from the black goes up and down over here, and this one over here does the same thing. And then I can put my power, if you will, to the black, okay, and I put my load, which in this case happens to be a light bulb. Okay. On the other. And then I've just got to now, I've just got to attach the power. And you have to make sure you don't short out the circuit anywhere. And just to make sure we don't short out the circuit, we always put a load on something. And so you'll notice, here we go. Here's a load. And we'll always put that in series with the power. And that prevents us from ever accidentally shorting out the circuit. Now I've got a very simple power source here. Well, nine volt battery. And you'll notice here. Now if I turn that on, 
It would help if I picked a better battery because I didn't, I picked a dead battery, but this would be how you would set it up. I apologize for having a dead battery. But what you'll notice is the two, you know, basically the, the, uh, the single pole, double throw. Okay. So this is the pole and these are the two throws and it goes one or two. And you hook those two together, put them in series with the power and the load. And that's how a three-way light works. Well, are there any other questions? Since there are no other questions, um, I will go ahead and end the stream. I hope everybody learned from this. Um, we didn't have anybody join today. And so since we didn't have anybody join today, no questions, uh, I am going to schedule uh, a, uh, a live stream next week for December 15th at 4 p.m. Central Time. But if we don't have anybody show up to that one, I will probably hold off until requested. Again, I hope everybody's having a great holiday season. And everybody's getting ready for Science Olympiad. And please send good thoughts and uh, and, and what have you to the, to the uh, Poots family uh, for their loss this week. Thank you.